In a very big move, the Fed came out with a bazooka last night. And here to give us some context on what this means and how things could uh, evolve as we move forward, I'm here with Scott Coburn. He's Managing Director of Global Fixed Income. I want to start with the timing because the Fed was planning to come out this week. Uh, they didn't wait. So tell me a bit about, you know, why you think they had to move right now. Or seeing a dramatic weakening in the global economic activity. I mean, countries and, and uh, states are shutting down and restricting activity and social distancing. And so in response to that, uh, the slowdown in economic activity, the Fed moved up its, uh, its meeting from the two-day uh, meeting early and scheduled this week to uh, Sunday evening with an extraordinary move, restarting quantitative easing. Uh, they cut rates down to effectively zero, the zero to 20, uh, 25 basis point range. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they've, they've enhanced liquidity uh, as well for, uh, for the functioning, the, the effective functioning of the, uh, the capital markets. So it's an extraordinary move. The, and it's coordinated as well. We actually saw that a number of other central banks coming in and everyone trying to work together around this. Yeah, so we, ha we had the Reserve Bank of uh, New Zealand last night cut rates down to 25 basis points. Australia indicated that they're going to be moving this Thursday as well. Uh, you had the Bank of Canada on Friday move and they'll likely uh, join uh, the Fed at uh, 25 basis points uh, sometime this week. So uh, you're definitely getting a coordinated uh, uh, reaction by the central banks. Um, you know, you've got the rate cuts, you've got restarting of asset purchases, uh, and this, you know, dealing with the plumbing uh, issue, which is essentially making sure that the markets function, uh, introducing, uh, you know, repos, what they call term repos. And then there's a variety of customized measures, you know, depending on your country. So they're, they're coming out in full force. And then now, though, it has to be joined by fiscal policy uh, and response on the healthcare system as well. One thing, are you, what are you seeing in the markets right now? Because I think the one thing that, you know, the market reaction this morning has not been positive. Right. Uh, there's a bit of, you know, this was a big move, but at the same time, it spooked, I think, the markets a bit in terms of, of uh, what equity investors were, were looking. So what is the Fed trying to get ahead of? I mean, the, the Fed wants the markets to function as efficiently as possible, given the, the tremendous uncertainty. We're going through a dramatic economic slowdown, and there is a shock. Um, and this response is not going to solve that. It's not solving the virus challenge. But they want to make sure that the, the markets are, are, are liquid. And uh, that's what they're really trying to address at this moment with the aggressive actions. Uh, and, you know, uh, there, we expect the G7 to have a, an emergency fiscal meeting probably extended to G20. So this is going to complement other actions to uh, try to stabilize things. But it's clearly a, you know, a, it's a public health emergency that uh, monetary policy alone can't re uh, resolve. Let me ask you, um, you're right, public health emergency. And, you know, this is the first of hopefully other big, you know, packages, fiscal stimulus coming in. Is there more the Fed or the central banks could do at this point? I mean, Absolutely. Is, there is. There is well, I mean, the, the creativity, you can, you're only limited by your imagination and creativity. Uh, certainly there are programs that were, uh, you know, in 2008 that deal with commercial paper in the U.S. Uh, the Bank of Canada introduced a banker's acceptance purchase uh, program that will get more details this weekend. So we can, you know, they'll develop programs as they uh, as they see challenges in the markets and you know it's a very fluid situation uh, they don't pretend to have all the uh, solutions right out of the gate so you know creative solutions will come along they certainly can increase QE they can uh, extend uh, the length of forward guidance uh, you know effectively New Zealand said rates are going to stay here for a year so you can do a lot more um, but this is you know the the initial salvo let me ask you, if you're an investor uh, and you're watching the markets, I mean, over the past week and even uh, today, I mean, what should people keep in mind? I mean, this is a tough time. Yeah, I mean, I think you think of it two ways. One, in the short term, there's going to be tremendous volatility, a shock. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult. Hopefully, you know, we've got a well-diversified and liquid portfolio. Um, but certainly, longer term, over the medium term, this is setting up, you know, investors for uh, taking advantage of, of, of attractive uh, companies and, and corporate debt. I feel like I should ask you one last thing before I let you go, uh, negative rates. That's the one thing people yeah. are talking about. And again, I know you're not a fortune teller, but yeah. does this set us up in that direction? Well, I, you know, both the Bank of Canada and the Fed indicated uh, that their preference is not to go there. And so, um, you know, I think other uh, initiatives will be used before we even get to that situation, which, you know, is well entrenched in Europe. Scott, thanks very much. My pleasure.